Now let's take a look at the selection brushes. These brushes allow you to create selections by painting with a brush. Whereas watercolor brushes deposit watercolor paint, a selection brush deposits a selection. There are three places you can find the selection brushes. Underneath the magic wand, there is the selection brush tool. If you have a selection tool selected, you can find it in the properties bar. And there's an entire default brush category of selection brushes. Let's start with the selection brush tool. I'll reset it. This is a basic circular brush with a feathered edge. If I reduce the opacity, it's not unlike the digital airbrush. When I paint, a red color is applied to the canvas. This is a temporary overlay that allows you to visualize the shape and opacity of the selection. Once I lift my pen up, the red overlay is replaced by a marquee. If you'd like to keep the overlay visible, you can activate the overlay in the properties bar. You can even show the marquee and the overlay at the same time. We'll come back to this. Just like brushes that add paint, I can customize some of the properties of the selection brush tool. In addition to modifying the opacity, I can change the size and grain. I'll draw a spiral shaped stroke for my selection. Then I'll need to fill it with something or paint into it. Let's fill it with a gradient called bars of color. I'll deselect the selection. And you can see that selections are not just useful for selecting content, they can also be used to create unique brush strokes. I'll revert this template. Depending on the mode selected in the properties bar, your brush may replace the current stroke with the next, or it may let you create multiple strokes if you choose add to selection. I can also subtract from the selection, which works as an eraser to remove some of the selection. There are shortcuts that can toggle between these modes as well. Holding Shift invokes the Add mode, and Alt invokes the Subtract mode. I'll set the mode back to Add. The selection brushes support transparency. If I draw some selections with high and low opacity, and then fill them with a gradient, you can see how much of the background is being covered once the selections have been filled. You can better visualize the areas of low opacity by adjusting the marquee threshold in the properties bar. You can use this to show the entire selection edges or just the most opaque areas. I'll leave the marquee disabled. You can also change the properties for the red overlay in the selection view options flyout. I can change the color as well as the opacity of the overlay. I can even choose to visualize the selected area or the masked area. If I choose masked area and a fully opaque black overlay, this gives me a great stencil effect. You can toggle between these modes to better visualize your selections. I'll leave it set to masked area for now. Starting in Painter 2023, you can even save multiple presets of your selection visualization options to suit a variety of subjects and workflows. There are a few commands that can be used with the selection brushes in the properties bar or the select panel. For example, we can invert and deselect. Let's switch to the selection brushes category now, and I will choose the soft variant. The distinction between the selection brush tool and the selection brushes is that selection brushes can utilize additional brush properties and are able to be saved as variants. For example, in the properties bar, I can change the size and angle properties, opacity properties, and I can even customize the shape of this brush using the shape flyout. The captured flyout is available for captured brushes as well. There are even more properties in the advanced brush controls and general brush controls. There are even expressions that can be linked to this brush. Currently, I can vary my pressure to control the opacity of the selection brush. I can also control the size with pressure if I like. Let's experiment with some of the default variants to get a feel for the variety of looks you can get with these brushes. Let's try Fractal. I want to make sure my flow map is set to clouds for this brush to work correctly. When I create a selection, I can get a great cloudy effect. I'll hide the overlay, fill the selection with the bars of color gradient, and deselect. I'll clear that layer and try another selection brush called Falling Leaves. I'll draw some strokes and then fill them with a texture called Desk Paint. You can see that it creates an interesting image composite. 
As you can see, it's possible to get a lot of different looks and effects out of these selection brushes. Let's clear that layer, 